Hello and welcome again to my YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing to watch one of my videos. Today I'm going to tell you something about why you should choose sprouted grain flour. When I figured out that this existed, I was very excited and I want to share my knowledge with you. So a sprouted grain is simply a grain that's been allowed to sprout and begin to germinate. Some of the starch in the grain breaks down into simple sugars in the process, which the body can use for quick energy. It therefore changes the composition of the grain, creating a vegetable and not a starch anymore, as the grain in the sprouting process turns into a plant that your body sees as a vegetable. So, this makes the grain easy to digest, as you now need vegetable enzymes to break down and not pancreatic enzymes. It also makes the grain easier to digest because it breaks down the grain's natural barrier. Sprouting the grains also increase amylase activity, which again benefits digestion, as amylase is an enzyme that helps digest carbohydrates. The glycemic response is significantly reduced, which is very good for people with type 2 diabetes. And the satiety is increased, which is good for weight management. Dormant vitamins and minerals are activated in this process. And it increases vitamin C, carotene and trace minerals, and it actually creates B vitamins. Trace minerals are minerals which you do not need that much of, and that your body only has a very small amount of but they are nevertheless very important. This is minerals like iron, manganese, zinc and iodine. The flavor also changes when sprouting the grains and it becomes more developed and delicious. Whole wheat from sprouted grains does not taste as bitter as whole wheat in baked goods normally can. Flour from sprouted grains is not easy to come by and is often very expensive and products made from sprouted grain flour are sometimes ridiculously expensive. When I decided to switch to sprouted grain flour I knew I had to make it myself and I did some research about it. Fortunately for me I already had most of the remedies at home. I had sprouting trays because I make my own sprouts already and I had my dehydrator as I make my own beef jerky. So all I really needed was something to grind my grains with. First I bought a fairly cheap coffee grinder, which should be able to grind grains also, but it becomes warm in a split second and therefore takes forever to grind the grains, and does not make it as fine as I want it to be. I therefore wanted something else, and better. And I got this amazing old-fashioned grain mill as a present from my sister. For me it's perfect, as I get the exercise at the same time when grinding and grinding. And you can decide how fine you want the flour. I take the grain mill to my couch, my dry grains on one side, my container on the other side, and I grind away. I might begin to look like Popeye at some point, and my son has to turn the volume on the TV way up because of my noise. But I like it. You can decide to use another grinder, and there are so many different kinds on the market, both manually and automatic. So I'm sure you can find something for your liking. So when you sprout your own grains, make sure you buy organic and GMO free. This means that they have not been genetically modified. If the grain is organic and from the EU, which I live in, you know it's GMO free, as organic products in the EU are not allowed to be genetically modified. So now I just want to go through the process from grain to flour. First I soak the grains for about 6 hours in water. It doesn't matter what kind of grains it is, I just soak them for 6 hours. Then I put them in my sprouting tray. If you in this part of the process allow the sprouts to become too big, you run the risk of malting the grain. This can make your bread overly sweet and gooey and will not be able to cook through. 
It's enough that you can see the little white sprouts peeping through in most of the grains. For my grains it takes about 24 hours for my wheat, uh, 30 hours for my spelt and 36 hours for my kamut, as they are different sizes. Then you have to dry the grains. You have to dry it at a low temperature in a dehydrator as you want to dry them and not roast them. Therefore, the oven is not a good alternative. The length of the drying process depends on your dehydrator and the grain, the moisture level and amount of grains in a layer. I normally put the grains in the dehydrator before going to bed and then check on them the next day until they are done. They need to be very dry. So then I have to grind it and I store it in an airtight container. It can stay like this for about six months, or you can refrigerate it, or even freeze it for a longer time. Then you use your amazing flour to make delicious food with. You should be able to replace it one to one ratio with normal flour in recipes, but I find it to vary a little, so try it out. So this is Kamut. Kamut is actually a brand name. The grain is also known as Khorasan wheat or sometimes Pharaoh's grain because tales say it was discovered in ancient Egyptian tombs and transported to America by a pilot where it was grown. I don't think my Kamut stems from the old Egypt, but it's a nice story though. I will call it Kamut from now on as this is probably the name you know this grain under. My Kamut is Canadian and the best quality comes from North America, where the condition seems to be ideal for this particular grain. It is always grown organically and is never genetically modified, so this is a very good reason to choose this ancient grain. Kamut contains about 30% more protein than wheat and more fatty acids, and it has a rich, nutty and buttery taste, and I'm a huge, huge fan. It is said that if you are allergic to wheat, you may be able to tolerate kamut even though it contains gluten, but I would be careful nevertheless. Kamut is easily digested and high on, for example, the mineral manganese, which contributes to healthy bone structure and bone metabolism and acts as a coenzyme to assist metabolic activity in the human body. There have been several studies made after the popularity rose, where Kamut is compared to modern wheat. An Italian group made a study about irritable bowel syndrome and found that there was a significant decrease in abdominal pain, bloating and tiredness when switching to Khorasan wheat instead of modern wheat. I can really relate to this and then have the exact same result when I switched my grain. So as I said, I'm a huge fan and I love the taste and smell of this wonderful grain and I will absolutely continue to use this in my diet. This is the biggest grain that I'm using and this is why I take the longest time to dry. And it is also the most expensive of the three, but it's absolutely worth it. Spelt is also an ancient grain that has become popular and it is hardier and more nutritious than modern wheat. It contains a moderate amount of gluten, which is easier to digest though. It is a rich source of vitamins and minerals, and it is healthier because the nutrients are contained in the kernel and not removed during milling, which often happens to modern wheat. It is lower on calories compared to wheat, which we all like. Spelt has a tough outer hull compared to wheat, which actually protects it from insects and eliminates the need for chemical pesticides. This makes it especially good for organic farmers. Spell does not rise as much as wheat, as it does not contain as much gluten, and you should take that into account when baking. I love spell pasta as it holds its texture during cooking compared to whole wheat pasta. So spell is absolutely also one of my favorite pastas, and it's the grain that has the medium size compared to my other grains, and that's why it takes 
a little longer than wheat in the dehydrator. So I read about sprouting of grains from a metabolism diet where wheat was not allowed but sprouted wheat was okay to use. So I wanted to give it a try and as I have told you I have not regretted it since. My wheat is whole as I am sprouting it and that is not possible if the grain is not in its whole structure. Therefore the bran, the germ and the endosperm of the wheat kernel are intact where the bran and germ are stripped away in refined grains, which is a shame, as the germ is the most vitamin and mineral rich part of the wheat kernel. It contains a lot of fiber, to which has so many health benefits, and most of the fibers are in the bran, which is included in the whole wheat, but unfortunately not in refined flours. When you take this whole wheat and make it into a sprouted whole wheat, you get a delicious and much healthier grain than what you get in your white wheat flour. And this is the smallest grain that I am using and that's why it takes the least time to dry in my dehydrator. So until a few weeks ago I had only made my own spelt, kamut and wheat. But two weeks ago my sister told me that she had seen something on the internet about making your own sprouted flour from quinoa. So quinoa is a superfood anyway. Uh, it's not a grain, it's actually a seed that we just prepare and consume like a grain. Um, it's high in nutrients than most grains and it has a very nice nutty flavor. The best thing about it is that it's gluten free. So I wanted to try it and this is my first batch I actually made. It smells delicious and I just made some buns yesterday where I also used the quinoa flour and it's ab absolutely amazing. So I have now taken you through the process of how to make the, the flour. I have made some videos that are more thorough so you can see how to make the different kinds of flours and you can choose those if you want to. So I have also told you about the health benefits um, of why to use these kinds of flowers. And uh, I can't emphasize enough, it's also because of the taste. It tastes so much better than normal flour does, it actually has taste. Um, if you have a normal uh, white wheat flour, it doesn't taste of anything. But this smells delicious, it tastes delicious. And I use my sprouted flour almost every day. It doesn't matter if I make pizza, I make bread or buns, or as I told you earlier, if I'm coating a chicken nugget or I'm making a meatball, if there's supposed to be flour in it, I use my sprouted flour and never normal flour anymore. So don't be scared, dig in. It's much healthier and it's much tastier. And I hope you have enjoyed the video and I will see you again soon.